Greetings, LGR here, and today I've got some stuff to unbox. Some packages from you. Well, maybe not you in particular, but you as in the collective you that watch these videos and uh, occasionally send in packages for me to take a look at. So yeah, a few of them have showed up in recent weeks and I'm going to go ahead and unbox them here. Oh, and I'm using a new camera, so if it looks a little different than normal, then that's what it is. I'm using the 1080p 60 frames per second mode for this one, but I'll be testing it out throughout the month of January for its 4K capabilities and stuff like that. Yeah, let's get out of the kitchen, dive into some of these boxes and see what's in here. I'm excited. All right, nice and comfy in here. Oh, and if the sound quality isn't quite sounding good. Uh, my apologies for that. I'm still waiting on an external mic to show up for it, so I will be using that in the future. Also, because this is a new camera and I'm uh, trying out the mic that it comes with, it probably isn't that good, but... Oh yeah. Speaking of mic, this one comes from Mic 4K6. So, I've got uh, some PC game stuff in here. First up is Edna and Harvey The Breakout, which I am not familiar with with this game pretty much at all. I've seen the name around places, but I don't know what kind of game it is, but it looks like it's a European edition. That's cool though, nice collector's box. <laughs> I also didn't know this existed, Muppet Babies Air, Land, and Sea. That's a bizarre little box as well, quite thin, but cool. That's sort of an odd release. Oh, what is this, The Whispered Word? Also never heard of this. What the heck not? Well, this one's not very obscure, but I did want it. Uh, Uru, Ages Beyond Mist. This is the sort of MMO, I guess, version of Mist. I have never played this one. I don't even know if you can play it anymore, but uh, it's a thing. I, I just know nothing about it. So thank you very much, Mike, for sending those my way. Uh, this next one also appears to be from someone named Mike, Michael. <laughs> It's just packaging. Okay, well, let's see. Oh. Okay. So this is a, this is a little different. This is a Roland DG MIDI processing unit, MPU 401. So I don't think this is from uh, someone called Mike at all. I think that was just the seller on eBay. I think this is from Anders. Um, they recently sent me some uh, Roland MT32 related stuff. And there was supposed to be an MPU-401 unit. Yeah, wow, okay. It's definitely what this is. So I don't actually have a Roland MT-32 yet, but I'm betting it's in, in one of these boxes because he said he was gonna be sending them my way along with some extra trinkets because uh, I'm planning to do a video on those. All right, got another one here. Uh, this one is from Nathan, it looks like. Oh, I see wood grain. Holy crap. Check out that beast. Oddly enough, I don't see any tuning. What is this, like an amp? Either way, it's friggin' awesome. Holy crap, this thing looks neat. Oh, looks like there was a note inside the box from Nathan. Uh, I wanted to share you some history on this rather old amplifier. I received it from my grandmother, wow. Uh, it, I hooked it up to my rather impressive at the time Amiga gaming rig. Had many speakers that this thing drove and it sounded pretty darn good with 13 year old. I'd hung on to this with the intent of using it again, but at this point, I think it's better off going to the hands of someone that appreciates the vintage. Oh, you know I do. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Nathan. This thing, I've, I've got to try it with my one of my own Amigas. Like, this just looks awesome. I love that design. It's so understated. That texture, it's very nostalgic. Oh, such a cool little box. A quality product of Japan. I know nothing about this company called Herald, and I'm going to have to look into it. All right, got another one here from Amir. Ah, I'll open it up and see what we got. Oh, <laughs> okay, this is something I actually got for myself. Um, yeah, this is uh, just Call of Duty, the first one, but it's in the big box. And after I did my big box PC game video thing, where I talked about uh, obscure big box releases, there were some people that told me, hey, this, this exists. In fact, there's one on eBay right now if you wanted to get it and uh, I did. Thank you to those who let me know about this, but yeah, this is one that I bought myself and forgot about. <laughs> All right, next one here is from someone named Ryan. Let's see here. Clint, I hope this strange mouse makes a nice addition to your PC oddware collection. Keep up the great videos. Well, I will try my best, sir. 
Holy crap. <laughs> oh, that's absurd. What is this? The Power Mouse by Prohance Choose the Future. What, this has got face plates? That is delightfully odd. And pretty hideous. Wow, look at all those things it's compatible with. My goodness. Incredibly versatile. I bet so. With that many buttons, if it wasn't versatile, I would be shocked and a bit concerned. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. This this looks awesome and should make an enjoyable oddware sometime. Yeah. All right, got another one here from Chris. Oh, packing peanuts. Holy crap. It's a zip photo show. Still sealed. I actually do have one of these, but not in box. In fact, it's missing like the remote and the cables and stuff. This is awesome. I've been wanting to cover this. Uh, it pretty much is just like a zip drive that plugs up to your TV and lets you look at pictures on your friggin' TV. I mean, it, it's about as simple as it gets. It's just sort of a weird interface for uh, the classic zip drive, which I need to talk about zip drives at some point in the future anyway. So. Uh, this will be an interesting side piece to talk about as well. Thank you very much, Chris. Even if you included a bunch of nasty packing peanuts. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, this looks like another package from Anders. Yeah, I thought that was a note, but it's not. It's just a, an eBay seller thingy. I'm gonna cable here. Okay. That's another MPU 401. <laughs> I can't wait to dive into these because I have zero experience with MPU 401 MT32 stuff. Got another one here from Anders. <laughs> Thank you in advance, dude. You have delighted me with uh, MIDI goodness and I haven't even gotten to all of it yet. I see ooh, an adapter from Roland. No doubt this will come in handy. And that's all there is inside that one. Okay. One more from Anders. And the more I think about it, the less sure I am how to say your name. Sorry. Oh, this this feels like what I thought it would always feel like. <laughs> feel free to turn that into a, a clip out of context. Look at that. That is a Roland MT32, the multi-timber sound module. Ah, oh, wow. I have one of these since like forever. Some of my earliest memories of playing with sound on a PC were on a friend of the family's computer. He had a 46 with an MT32 and um, that is beautiful. I mean, this, this is such a cool piece of sound technology. It doesn't look like it's in the greatest shape, but you know what, I don't care. I'm gonna clean this up and take wonderful care of it and uh, hopefully give it a review sometime in the next couple months. This looks awesome. All right, got one here from John. Okay, I see boxes of games. All right, what is this? Holy crap, that's a sealed copy of Money Town <laughs> by Davidson and uh, Simon & Schuster. This is an interesting little edutainment sort of kids game. I've wanted to cover this one actually, so that's really cool to see this in the box. I don't even know if I've seen the box to it before. That is awesome. I also have, oh man, a very nice condition box here for 3D Ultra Pinball Creep Night. I have very fond memories of playing the demo to this, and you know what, I've never actually played the full version, but uh, it's a bit of a step up from the original 3D Ultra Pinball from what I recall. Pacific Theater, oh, this is an Abacus uh, expansion for Flight Simulator. I think Flight Simulator 95, there we go. Wings Over China, this is another one of those. These are just third party packs for the Flight Sim series. This one's actually for Microsoft Combat Flight Simulator, which, yeah, I guess this one is too. I did not notice that, but I, I do now. That's awesome, what the heck? Combat Flight Simulator had uh, expansions in third party form. I didn't know that. I've got several for Flight Sim 95 and 4.0 and 3.0 and stuff, but these are really cool to have. Wow, they just keep coming. Pearl Harbor for Combat Flight Simulator 2, December 7th, 1941. Wow, look at that that word art text there. That's, <laughs> I had no idea these packs existed, but this delightfully cheesy artwork is making my day. Oh, our Flight Simulator 98 here. This is the, it looks kind of like the secondary release. I'm not entirely sure. No, no, this is the first release or one of the first ones because it has this gatefold one. I have a version of this box that is a non-gatefold and it has this like little 
15 years thingy on front, but yeah, it looks like the maybe proof of purchase or something was taken off of there for a rebate. Either way, super cool. I did not have one with a gayfold box in front. And B-17 Flying Fortress, the Mighty Eight. Uh, one of the B-17 games of many from Microprose. This is one of the later ones. Very cool. Big fan of Flight Sims and uh, the B-17 series in particular was quite a standout back then, although I've never played this one. So thank you very much, sir, once again. All right, I've got one here from Kenneth, who has sent me quite a few things over the years, and uh, I have no doubt this is gonna be something awesome as well. Oh, packing peanuts, no! On the other hand, it does have <laughs> some wrapping paper. The dude always puts these cool little touches and packages for him. Look at that, it's wrapped up. How thoughtful, I love when people do this. Merry Christmas to me. Merry Christmas. Uh, this is Rocket Jockey. Yes. I have never played this, but uh, he has talked it up to me and said it's pretty freaking awesome for what it is. This is the PC version, complete inbox, which is kind of hard to find as far as I can tell, but I, I'm really not familiar with this game, but uh, I want to be. So thank you very much for sending in my way, dude. All right. I got another one here from Kenneth because, of course, Backing peanuts! Uh. <laughs> yep. Another wrapped up piece. Yay! Presents! Oh, alright, I know what this is. This is a copy of Starflight. And it is in much, much better shape than the one I had. Look at what a cool gayfold thingy this is. This is a, a folio box or case or sleeve or whatever you want to call it. Otherwise known as like LP style packaging. I've done a video on these before and I think I even showed Starflight in that one, but uh, this is in super great shape and it looks like it has more stuff too. Like that is chock full of goodies. Thank you very much. Oh, how nice. <laughs> See what this is. Oh, hey, okay. I know exactly what that is. I have another one that is uh, similar to this. Yeah, this goes to certain RC, like radio controlled flight simulators. There's one for helicopters, there's one for planes and whatnot. This one has a different cable. Yeah, it's, it's just a different one than what I had in the past. Or what I still have, actually. Yeah, here we go. Holy crap, this is an early one. Look at this. Oh my goodness. That is definitely an older version than the one I have. Yeah, I've been meaning to talk about these for some time now. I'm glad I held off because this looks like it might be the original version, the original release. Hard to tell. Nope, that's the original release, 1987 JSK Associates. Dude, comes with everything, wow. All in a little Ziploc bag. I wonder if it originally came with that. I have another one that's actually in a box, but it is a much later release that looks more polished. They're made specifically to simulate remote controlled flight on a computer. So it's a different set of physics and stuff. Pretty neat idea. There's some for helicopters as well. I have those. I have a bunch of these. I just haven't talked about them yet. So I'm gonna have to get to that sometime. Aha, there we go. Oh, cool. Generic party wrapping. I will take it, because that's all I have this time of year, is generic parties. This is my birthday and Christmas are like right on top of each other. Oh, dude, what the heck is this? This is a compact gamepad? Whoa, man, that feels horrible. <laughs> I love it. I, I don't know what this is, but that's super cool. And now I gotta look into this turbo fire. That is generic as nuts, but yet it has that sort of mid 90s compact color scheme going on. That's neat. One more from Kenneth. This is a pretty unruly box. Now what do we got here? Holy crap. <laughs> what the nuts? Computer football, sports games, and baseball and basketball, hockey and soccer. Five computer games in one. Ooh, like a full, like big wood grain table of games. $34.95, but a Brendel's. Wow, I remember Brendel's. I used to go there quite a bit as a kid. Dude, oh, 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 oh. look at this monstrosity. This this is crazy. This is in pretty good shape too. 
Wow. I cannot wait to dive into this. This looks ridiculously involved and yet super simple. See some electronics under there. I bet this thing is like solid state through and through. There might be some microchips in here. I don't, I don't know. I've never heard of this, but that is awesome. Thank you, Sir Ken, once again. This is cool. Electronic Data Controls Corporation, 1972. And Computer Baseball, 1969. This is old. Okay. Ugh. I've got one more package here from Rachel. And this one is heavy and long and promising. I believe I know what this one is. And if that's what I'm thinking it is, then there's some cool IBM stuff in here. Yep. Check this out. Well, some of the keys fell off, but... Hopefully they can go back on there okay. Yeah, they probably will. This is an IBM Model F. Uh, it's a personal computer keyboard, you know, for like the IBM PC. Oh man, there's no sticker on the back or anything. No little, uh either but ooh, that feels good to get those keys back on there but thankfully it doesn't look like any of these stems are broken off the back another one here and oh no one of the little feet broke off that sucks this is two IBM Model F's uh, she said she didn't know if they worked I believe at least I think she said they she didn't know if they worked but um yeah hopefully I'll be able to put that little foot back on the back there so still very cool. I've wanted a couple of these for my other IBM PCs, and uh, yeah, hopefully this can be fixed up and get in working order. It has me concerned for the rest of this, though, if that saw that kind of abuse. Oh, let's hope that these survived. All right. Mm -hmm. Overall, it looks to be in pretty... Oh, nope, that got beat up. Yeah, that should just bend. There we go. That's okay. But yeah, this is an MFM hard disk controller card for an IBM PC slash XT. So your hard drive is going to plug in right in this area over here. And uh, yeah, you know, why not have a spare of these? Okay, hopefully this one fared a little better because this is much more uncommon. Oh, what a beautiful card. Yeah, this is uh, well, all this stuff is for IBM PC XT computers or compatibles. But yeah, this right here is monochrome display adapter. How cool is that? I mean, it just, it just looks awesome. And I've wanted an early one like this. That's really neat. All right. Got some cables in here for the uh, MFM drive and floppy drive, it looks like. I know exactly what this is. This is a Seagate ST225 MFM hard disk drive. I don't know how well you can see that there, but this is a gigantic like 21 and a half megabyte is basically a 20 megabyte hard disk. And I hope it was parked <laughs> before it was shipped. But you know, uh, if not, I don't know. This is a cool display piece and it wasn't getting used. So why not have it? Here we have another black and white and parallel card for IBM compatibles. Check out that oh, 1981 chip right there. Excellent stuff. This one looks to be in decent shape. And lastly here we have a, a serial card with some RAM installed on it. This is an Everex EV140. So we got a RAM here, I believe a real-time clock, a serial connector there. It only has the smaller one right here. We don't have the 25 pin. Um, but yeah, this is just a neat little card. I, I like these sort of multi-cards for IBM PC compatibles because you only had uh, so many slots left after you had the required ones. Thanks very much, Rachel, for sending this my way. This is, these are just, these are cool cards to me. All, all this stuff is really cool. So, wow, that's quite a bit of stuff. <laughs> Thank you very much to everyone who sent stuff my way. And um, if you were appalled at the quality of this video, I'm sorry, but I'm just getting used to this new camera. So I just wanted to uh, send out a quick shout out and thank you to everyone who's sent things my way and supported LGR over this year. And I'll try to get this camera's sound and video quality nailed down in the future, but I just like just got it today. So I got excited. Uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching and hope you have a good 2017.